uh, here is the image. You see the direction of motion is pen roughly perpendicular to the direction of the sun. But when it came close to Mars, the high-rise camera could look at it from the side. November 20th, 2025. Avi Loeb just published an analysis that changes everything we thought we understood about 3i Atlas. The high-rise image from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter shows a glowing plume extending 3,000 kilometers ahead of the object, not toward the sun, not away from the sun, but in the direction of motion. At typical thermal speeds for sublimating volatiles, it takes only one day to cross that distance. Loeb's question is direct. Could this be a technological signature of illuminating or clearing the path from hazardous micrometeorites? Meanwhile, NASA held a briefing where the high-rise images were conspicuously absent, no explanation, no timeline, just vague reassurances that everything is natural and expected, and the public is noticing. Loeb received letters from India, Belgium, Poland, people watching the institutional defensiveness and saying, your work has reignited my belief that science can still be courageous. If you've been following 3i Atlas and something about the official narrative feels incomplete, you're not imagining it. Hit subscribe now, drop a like, and let's break down the plume that shouldn't exist. The data NASA won't release, and the December observations that will settle this once and for all, because the evidence is about to force an answer no one can ignore. Let's start with what Avi Loeb observed in the high-rise image. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter captured 3i Atlas on October 2, 2025, a 3.2-second exposure showing the object with a glowing extension ahead of it, not trailing behind, not pointing at the sun, ahead, in the direction the object is traveling. Here's why that's a problem. Comet plumes follow physics. If sunlight heats pockets of ice, the plume extends toward the sun where illumination is strongest. If radiation pressure or solar wind blows material away, the plume extends away from the sun. If the object is shedding debris as it moves, you get a trailing stream behind it, dust and gas slowed by solar wind drag while the nucleus keeps moving forward. But a plume ahead of the object, perpendicular to the solar direction, that doesn't fit any natural mechanism we know. You can't have volatiles sublimating in front of an object that hasn't reached that space yet. You can't have solar wind pushing material forward faster than the nucleus is traveling. The physics doesn't work. Loeb points out that at typical thermal speeds, the velocity at which gas molecules move when they sublimate from ice, it takes only one day to cross the 3,000 kilometer extension visible in the high-rise image. That's fast. That's not a slow drift of particles gradually accumulating. That's active, ongoing release happening right now as the object moves. And then Loeb asks the question that makes institutional astronomers uncomfortable. Could this be a technological signature of illuminating or clearing the path from any hazardous micrometeorites that may cause damage to a technological object? He's not saying it is technological. He's saying the orientation and behavior match what you'd expect if an object were actively clearing debris from its path. If you're traveling at 30 kilometers per second through interstellar space, micrometeorite impacts aren't trivial. They're destructive. A grain of dust hitting at that velocity has the kinetic energy of a bullet. So if you wanted to protect a vessel, you'd need a forward shield or a system that vaporizes debris before impact. That's speculation but it's informed speculation based on what the data actually shows, not what we wish it showed. Here's where the institutional response becomes suspicious. And NASA held a briefing on November 19th, the day before Loeb published this analysis. The high-rise images were expected. They'd been hyped. They were supposed to provide the highest resolution view of 3i Atlas we've ever gotten. These images were going to settle the debate about whether the object is natural or anomalous. And then the briefing happened. No high-rise images, no explanation for why they weren't shown. Just vague language about ongoing analysis and reassurances that everything observed so far is consistent with natural cometry behavior. Loeb's article doesn't explicitly call this out, but the timing is damning. He publishes his analysis the day after NASA's briefing, using high-rise data that's publicly available but somehow wasn't included in the official presentation. Why? If the images support the natural explanation, why not show them? Why not use the highest resolution data to shut down the anomaly discussion? Unless the images don't support the natural explanation. Unless showing them would raise more questions than answers. Unless what Loeb just documented, 
that forward-facing plume, is exactly the kind of feature NASA doesn't want to explain in a public forum. One of the letters Loeb received captures this perfectly. Giovanni Carbonella from Belgium writes, Yesterday's NASA presentation left me uneasy. The absence of the long-anticipated high-rise images, along with explanations that seemed more like public relations language than scientific clarity, reminded me of how important it is to have independent voices who are willing to ask the difficult questions. That's not a conspiracy theorist. That's someone watching the official response and recognizing institutional defensiveness when they see it. The pattern is clear. When data is ambiguous or supports the comfortable narrative, NASA releases it immediately. When data raises uncomfortable questions, it gets delayed, minimized, or buried in technical jargon that deflects scrutiny. What strikes me most about Loeb's article isn't the technical analysis, it's the letters. Four messages from regular people around the world who've been following his work, not scientists, not researchers, just people paying attention, and they're all saying the same thing. Thank you for not backing down. Thank you for treating the anomalies seriously. Thank you for asking the questions institutions won't ask. Kaylee from the UK writes, You have used your words, your knowledge, your wisdom very carefully, and you have empowered many people to stand by their own beliefs. Ruben Daniel from India writes, Your research represents the transition from mythic intuition to scientific instrumentation in answering questions humanity has asked for thousands of years. Adam Dzidzic from Poland writes, When 3 Eye Atlas began glowing an intense blue at perihelion, I felt something I had never felt before, a mixture of awe and concern. It made me think of Don't Look Up, a man who saw what others refused to acknowledge. These aren't fringe voices. These are thoughtful, engaged people who recognize what's happening. They're watching institutional science deploy the same playbook used in every paradigm shift. Dismiss the anomalies, attack the messenger, circle the wagons around comfortable explanations. And they're rejecting it. Adam's letter is particularly striking. He's a father telling his nine-year-old daughter about Loeb's work every day. He's watching her curiosity grow, her questions deepen. And he's watching the scientific establishment respond with reflexive dismissal instead of genuine inquiry. He writes, Sometimes I feel that even if three... I, Atlas, changed course and headed straight toward Earth, some of them would still insist that it was just a comet. That's the institutional failure Loeb is exposing, not only through dramatic accusations, but by simply documenting what the data shows and asking what it means. And the public is noticing the contrast between his approach, measured, evidence-based, open to multiple possibilities, and NASA's approach, which feels increasingly like damage control. Here's what makes the next few weeks critical. Loeb writes, We can only hope that the mysteries of 3IATLAS will be cleared by data in the next few weeks when large ground-based telescopes as well as the Hubble and Webb telescopes will be able to characterize the jets of 3I Atlas by measuring their composition, speed, and mass loading rate. And then he makes a definitive statement. These details will inform us without a doubt whether the jets are produced by natural pockets of ice that are warmed by sunlight or by technological thrusters. This is the moment. December observations will measure. Composition, what molecules are in the jets. Natural comets produce specific ratios of water, CO, CO2, methanol, cyanogen. Technological propulsion would show different chemistry, possibly noble gases, ionized metals, or ratios that don't match solar system norms. Speed, how fast is the material moving? Thermal sublimation has predictable velocities based on molecular weight and temperature. If the jets are moving faster than thermal speeds allow, that's a problem for natural explanations. Mass loading rate, how much material is being released? Natural outgassing scales with solar heating and surface area. If the mass flux is too high or too consistent despite changing solar distance, that indicates an internal energy source, not passive heating. Loeb is setting a clear benchmark. The data coming in December will either confirm natural processes or rule them out. There's no middle ground. Either the composition, speed, and mass loading match what we'd expect from sublimating ice, or they don't. And if they don't, the technological hypothesis moves from speculation to serious contention. Let's come back to Loeb's question about micrometeorite clearing. If you're an interstellar object traveling at hyperbolic velocity, 30 plus kilometers per second, 
dust impacts are catastrophic. A grain of sand at that speed delivers as much kinetic energy as a bullet. Over thousands of years crossing the galaxy, even sparse dust becomes a sandblaster. So how do you protect a vessel? You need a shield, and the most efficient shield for a fast-moving object is a plasma or particle cloud ahead of the hull. You ionize or vaporize incoming particles before they reach critical systems. That's not science fiction. That's basic collision physics applied to high-velocity travel. And what would that look like from a distance? A glowing plume extending ahead of the object. Exactly what HiRISE captured. Loeb also mentions the possibility of searching for mini probes that may have separated from three IATLAS. If this is a technological object, December observations might reveal not just the main nucleus, but smaller objects in the vicinity, deployed instruments, ejected components, or secondary craft. Natural comets can fragment, but the pieces follow predictable trajectories based on outgassing and rotation. Technological objects could show coordinated motion or station keeping that defies gravitational dynamics. Here's the deeper issue. Loeb is highlighting without saying it directly. Institutional science has built a trap for itself. For decades, the response to any claim of anomalous objects has been, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That sounds reasonable, but in practice, it becomes a shield against inquiry. Because what counts as extraordinary evidence? If you detect an anomaly, institutions demand more data. When you provide more data showing the anomaly persists, they demand even more. At some point, the standard becomes impossible to meet, not because the evidence is insufficient, but because the conclusion is uncomfortable. 3i Atlas is demonstrating this in real time. We have a sunward anti-tail that persists for months, methanol to hydrogen cyanide ratios 10 times higher than any known comet X-ray emissions despite no detectable cometry gases, a forward-facing plume that defies natural outgassing physics. Color shifts, red to green, green, blue, as it moves away from the sun. A compact, non-fragmenting nucleus, despite extreme thermal stress. Organized jet structures that hold steady, despite rotation. Each anomaly alone gets dismissed as interesting but explainable. But together, the pattern is undeniable, yet the institutional response remains. We need more data before we can consider non-natural explanations. Loeb's approach is different. He's not claiming three. I, Atlas, is technological. He's saying the anomalies match technological signatures and we should investigate both possibilities rigorously. That's not sensationalism. That's science. December 19th, 2025. Closest approach to Earth. Every major telescope pointed at this object. Webb, Hubble, ground-based arrays, radio dishes. The data will come. And when it does, we'll know. If the jets show natural composition, natural speeds, natural mass loading, then 3IATLAS is just an extraordinarily weird comet. Rare, but natural. If the jets show anomalous chemistry, excessive speeds, or inconsistent mass flux, then we have a problem. Then the technological hypothesis isn't fringe speculation. It's the best explanation that fits the evidence. Loeb ends his article by sharing those letters because they matter. They show that people outside the institutional bubble are watching. They're paying attention, and they're noticing when the official narrative feels more like public relations than genuine inquiry. What do you think that forward-facing plume is? Natural outgassing defying physics, or something clearing its path? Drop your theory below. Subscribe so you don't miss the December data. This is the moment when speculation ends and evidence forces an answer. And share this with anyone still saying, it's just a comet because the plume pointing ahead of the object says otherwise.